Okay, thank you. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm going to talk about the uh, Persian Gulf. For those of you that aren't familiar with that part of the world, you've got the Gulf. It's interchangeably called the Persian Gulf, which is the oldest name, um, and more recent use of the term Arabian Gulf. Depends, obviously, which side you're from, which you refer to it as. Um, Iran on one side, and then the uh, Arab states, Iraq, Kuwait, um, Saudi, Bahrain, Qatar, and uh, the UAE, and a tiny bit of Oman on the, on the Arab side. So, if you're a sawfish, um, the Gulf would really be, uh, on paper, an ideal habitat. So, um, it's very shallow, it's uh, kind of post Holocene in origin, so the average depth is only 35 metres. Um, it's warm, it's, it's subtropical, it's high, high benthic and fisheries productivity. And we've also, um, from studies elsewhere, we know that seagrass, uh, sawfish are associated with certain habitats. So we have extensive seagrass beds in the south of the Gulf, and we've got the Tigris, Euphrates, estuary system in the northwest, and lots of uh, salt and sand and mud flats as well. And there's more limited mangroves in Iran and a little bit in the UAE as well, but not extensive mangroves. So good environment on paper, but um, what about researching them? Um, data poor environment for, for all Alaskan banks in, in general. So um, up until the past five years when we started to document diversity, really, really very little on anything to do with Alaskan banks. It's not recorded in, um, in government surveys. If they are recorded, they're just lumped together with sharks and rays. Um, a source that I use quite often is actually a survey that was done in 1937-1938. Um, that's actually one of the most useful pieces of information. So just a huge data gap in terms of scientific <coughs> data. So it just makes the, the job of assessing sawfish in particular very, very difficult. So we're forced to kind of scratch around for these scattered records and this just takes a huge amount of time. Um, I'm based in the UK, I'm um, doing this remotely, um, I'm not fluent in Arabic or, or Farsi, so um, it takes a huge amount of time to, to gain a single record. And I've been doing this, collect, trying to collect data uh, on individual animals and we do this for around 10 years and have less than 100 records, so that indicates um, the level of information there is. So you're going, you know, trying to get um, individual records of sores from people's homes, um, very occasionally from museums. The state of museums is very poor. The state of preservation is seeking that animal from uh, Qatar. Um, very badly preserved, inaccessible museums. You often have to rely on material in shops, things like this that you occasionally see. So we don't have scientific data. Um, the actual individual records of animals are, are few and far between. So we're kind of pushed uh, by necessity really to, to pull together data from a lot of disparate sources to try and pull together a coherent picture. So we've had to look at archaeology um, from historical sources, from anecdotal sources as well. So just in summary, just to start off, um, we definitely got uh, good records of Zeestron and, um, and Cuspid data from the Gulf. You know, they're, they're definitely there or they or at least there, um, and the Gulf is right on the edge of the range of um, on Microdon or Pristis Pristis now, sorry, um, just outside the Gulf, and I think there's records of Pavata right up to Pakistan, so um, a possibility of two further species as well. So if we look at the historical st uh, status. Uh, the vertebrae of sawfish are very uh, distinctive and are very easily identifiable from remains of other Egyptians. So there's been some really good uh, zero archaeological work on the southern coast of the Gulf. And that's um, documented that these uh, sawfish vertebrae are found all along the Gulf Coast um, from the start of civilization, really, 5000 BC, right up until um, sort of 1700 AD. Um, so that doesn't indicate that this was a, a rare species so being used, and in some cases, at some sites, they're actually common remains, so possibly even targeted. And then, again, looking at alternative sources of information, this is from uh, about 13th, 14th century, uh, geographer 
and he describes and provides an accurate illustration of uh, sawfish occurring up in the estuary uh, around the Iraq, Iran, uh, the northwestern Gulf area, and then being described as numerous and, and young animals being described, small animals. And then in the 1800s as well, when uh, you know, uh, Western explorers and naturalists and colonial administrators were going there, they were noticing you know, large animals, abundant animals, and recording you know, a number of colloquial names as well for them, the swordfish locally. And pearl diving, one of the, the first real industries in the Gulf, um, had thousands of divers in the water grubbing around on the seabed. Um, for months and months at a time, and, and shark bites did occur, um, but the divers were documented as not being particularly afraid of, um, of shark bite, but they were afraid of injury from sawfish, and there were reportedly uh, documented records of people being uh, cut in half by them. So starting to look a bit near the present day, um, actually, a uh, documented record from the, from the US Hydrographic Office when it was doing a pilot of the, of the Gulf and they documented an island of the uh, UAE that had um, uh, entertained or supported a targeted fishery for sawfish for, um, for a couple of months. And again looking at alternative sources, there was a British diplomat, the, uh, the commissioner for Bahrain when it was a, a British colony and uh, this is around the 1930s, 1940s, and he actually ac accurately described sawfish sores and uh, made that observation that um, you know, beaches were literally covered uh, with sawfish bills. And he even, he even went as far as to illustrate the frontispiece of the book with, with an accurate picture of the sawfish. And then prior to the 1960s, about the 50s, um, sawfish described as being, or large sawfish described as being a hazard to um, to fishermen in the in Dubai Creek. So again, closer to today, um, there's very little data that we can actually uh, say that there's been an actual decline. But we know that there's been some some trawl surveys, uh, old ones and new ones that were broadly comparable. So in UAE waters, that's both the Gulf and the Gulf of Oman, uh, in the late 60s and in the 2000s. Um, one of them, uh, the 1960s one, had two species as, um, as common, described them as common, and then uh, nothing recorded in the more recent one. And guidebooks for, for oil workers in Saudi were actually commented on these are now far less common than they used to be in a 30-year in a gap. And again, with the lack of scientific data, we have to infer rarity or infer absence um, it's a very large, distinctive animal. It's usually going to get recorded when it is caught. Um, so we've got a large number of surveys. I've just had an email now that uh, for uh, surveys 2009 to 2011 throughout the Gulf by all the Gulf states on the Arab side, uh, 250 hours of trawling, and they didn't catch a single sawfish. Um, so absent from fish books and guides. Um, Aerial surveys for dugongs, the southern Gulf is really important for dugongs. So the past six, seven years they've done intensive surveys. They regularly record sharks and uh, stingrays. They've never recorded a sawfish. And then uh, market surveys I've been doing in the Gulf uh, for the past five years. I've uh, processed several thousand glass and breaks and never seen a sawfish. And when they do occur, single animals in, in the past 20, 30 years, they're, they're noteworthy. So that indicates a rare animal. So, looking at, at the, uh, the status of them now, I think we'd be fairly convinced, uh, there's fairly strong evidence that there's been a severe decline in them from, from uh, a couple of hundred years ago or, or even sort of before 1950. But in terms of local extinction, this is much more difficult. There's occasional reports, we, we know there's records from 2006, 2007, occasional animals. Just a complete lack of data on elasmid breaks, generally real, really bad data situation. The situation on the entire Iranian coast is very unclear. We have landing figures from uh, one, one province of Iran up to, I think, over 120 tonnes for a year. So we don't know whether that's misidentification or bad reporting, just don't know at the moment. And then, the, you know, it's unclear, this photo is from just outside the Gulf, in the Gulf of Oman, so still occasional captures of, 
of uh, you know, five animals is, uh, is exceptional. But those are just outside the Gulf. We know they're highly mobile. Are these going into the Gulf? We just don't know. Just quickly run through threats. Uh, we're all going to talk about fisheries a lot. The Gulf's shallow. It's intensively developed coastline. This is a major, major problem. Probably beyond the scope of, of this workshop, but um, just coastal development everywhere. Huge loss of intertidal all around the Gulf. Um, that's a really big problem. And quickly run through the threats that your average sawfish might expect. Uh, gill nets just everywhere. Um, very intensive fisheries, catching the entire sort of range of um, uh, the lasm banks. Uh, any small animals in the intertidal are going to get nailed by hadra, intertidal fish traps. So there's prawn trawling, there's fish trawling. And uh, there's long lining for sharks, which also catches um, batoids as well. Anything that escapes through that is going to get taken by recreational fisheries. I was talking to a young man about a month ago in Bahrain who'd uh, caught and, and actually eaten a um, small sawfish. So there has been some progress. The Shark Conservation Society, UK um, based charity, they've uh, lobbied a local government. So They've secured protection in Qatar and Bahrain recently, hopefully Kuwait in the near future, and then possibly thinking about border coverage um, later on. And that's resulted in you know, having to get uh, posters done in, in multiple languages. A lot of the fishers in the Gulf um, aren't necessarily from, from Arab states or Iran. There's a lot of expatriate fishers there. So in terms of conservation priorities, I think the main one, and I think for globally, is just getting sawfish on the radar. They're iconic species, they're very distinctive, but if I went out in the streets and asked someone what is a sawfish, I think a lot of people would know. Um, that's, that's a given, really. Um, I think just simple desk-based research, uh, interview-based research, funded MSC projects would be really important in their own language, so, you know, a one MSC by an Iranian student, for example, would just, just plug that data gap. And that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.